When it comes to melee weapons, I enjoy a lot of them and have my favorites, just like any other Warframe player will. In this weapon in question, I never would have thought I'd enjoy, but with a certain build, this weapon feels so good to use, it basically feels like I'm cheating. That weapon in question being the Dual Lickers. So when it comes to the Dual Lickers and, well, Dual Swords in general, I was never really a big fan whenever I came to using them, but for some reason the Dual Lickers just scratch a certain inch that make these feel, well, phenomenal to use. But obviously, how does the weapon feel without mods? So, I already got our enemies here today. So, whenever it comes to the stats of the dual records, they aren't bad at all, to be honest with you. It has about 2 meter, 2.3 meters of range, has a crit chance of about 24%, with a crit multiplier of 3 times, which is very good. It also has a stat chance of about 15%, and attack speed of 1.08, which is really good for what it is. With the weapon having primarily toxin slash this damage type, it's quite a strong choice for dealing with corpus units, but... With his innate toxin, it allows for a good amount of build variety with all the other factions. But now that we're well above a six times combo, once we do a heavy attack, as so, we lose our skin that I applied and we go to the, well, Incarnon dual liquors. So once you change into the Incarnon, you'll gain about plus 100% melee damage. You'll gain 200% sprint speed and about 200% bullet jump. Uh, now, when attacking and killing enemies, as you'll see here, a toxin cloud will appear and with this toxin cloud it can spread depending on how you build your well your mod config and sadly these well these clouds that spawn are sadly unaffected by conditional overloads so no matter how hard you wish that to spread with it it won't work at all which is a little upsetting but this cloud here is affected by the mods you apply onto your uh delickers so any elemental status you apply onto it like say corrosive, viral, gas, etc., it will spread and well, it buffs it. But since we now covered over how the weapon functions by itself, how about the evolutions? How do they affect the weapon? So we skip evolution one since evolution one we've already covered and it just unlocks the incarnate itself. Let's move on to evolution two. Evolution two unlocks us two options, Alchemist's Wrath and Ronin's Rush. Alchemist's Wrath will give you plus 90% flat damage and five additional combo on targets affected by toxin. Ronin's Rush will give you plus 90% flat damage and on hit of a target of a like neutral combo, so basic combo of whatever you choose as your stance, you'll get plus 30% attack speed for 33 seconds, which I find to be a lot better than Alchemist's Wrath, so for today's build, we'll be using Ronin's Rush. Next up is Evolution 3, which gives us Orican Reach, Resolute Force and Swift Break. Oricon Reach gives us plus uh, 0.6 range. Resolute Force will give us plus 7 seconds of combo duration. And a Swift Break will give us plus 100% heavy attack uh, wind-up speed. When it comes to these, I can only see the first two being useful in most builds, as this one isn't really necessary, as it already attacks really quickly. So, and for today's build, we'll be using Oricon Reach to give us that plus 0.6 range. Finally, with Evolution 4, we got our last options, which are Absolute Valor, Poison Parasite, and Universal Readiness. Absolute Valor will give us plus 34% status chance. Poison Parasite on kill will give um, plus 33 health regen for 9 seconds if they have 3 plus stacks of Tox on them. Finally, we have Universal Readiness, which will give us 5 melee combo count on collecting ammo. Overall, with these last options, the only one I see really being worth using is Absolute Valor, as I find Poison Parasite and Universal Readiness to be outshadowed by the increase in status chance, which gives us 49% with no mods, which I find to be very useful. So, now that we've covered the evolutions, let's go ahead and cover the builds I have for you today. So... Now that we have covered the evolutions, the builds I have for you today are two options. We have a late game build and an early game build. The early game build is more centered around using the weapon as is, instead of using it in the Incarnon, because I still think this weapon can be used no matter where you are. I think it can cover you through the star chart up to the point you can get the Incarnons. So, I'll cover that first, and if you're a late game player, please do bear with me, as I will still like to show off a build that everybody can use, because this weapon is very strong. So. With the early game build, we are going to be using Swirly Tiger. You obviously do not need this Tenokai mod at all. This is just to show what it would be like if you somehow had the Incarnon, so ignore this. Conditional Overload is very good for it. Berserker's Fury is phenomenal. 
Uh, true seal and reach are amazing options if you obviously uh, don't have like sacrificial seal, which I have in the. Oh, I don't even have in here. Never mind. I forgot I took off weeping wounds and blood rush, since they are a little bit harder for early game players to acquire. We have fever strike, virulent scourge, vicious frost, and voltaic strike. The reason there are two toxin mods is to increase the amount of toxin damage you deal overall, which does apply to the gas clouds as we covered, or not gas clouds, toxin clouds. Sorry. And we're using viral electricity with melee influence. Once again, not even necessary. You could slap this off and uh, I think go heat. I think heat would work here. Like you could just easily take off Voltaic Strike and swap on Volcanic Edge and get heat instead of electricity. But electricity is to show a point. So let's go ahead and kill all these enemies. Let's respawn this working battle grouping. Yes, they are not on Steel Path yet. We'll get to that bit. So how does this weapon work just as is? Well... As you see, it does hit quite hard. It spreads its viral quite well. And, well, kills with ease. Obviously, I am uh, a little iffy with my aim, so it's not always doing its best job. But, obviously, I was holding W. If you didn't hold W and actually hit the neutral combo with it, as it wants you to, so just do this. We get Ronin's Rush, and you just do that on occasion, and then keep going. So, once you get your heavy attack, now you can apply all your status. And as you see, the gas cloud, not gas clouds, toxin clouds spread thanks to melee influence, but obviously, once again, it's not necessary. The weapons work perfectly fine as is against 155 enemies, which usually people will not be going up against, but at least the early stages, it's still strong and works quite well with and without the Incarnon. Now, let's go ahead and go over the late game build. Now, as I was saying in the previous one, let's go ahead and go over the late game build. When it comes to the late game build, as you see, our, stat, our stats drop a little bit and also increase. It's because now we're running Blood Rush and Weeping Wounds and not just flat increasing uh, mods. With this one, we now have Primed Reach and Primed Fever Strike instead of Normal Fever Strike and Normal Reach. We have Weeping Wounds for extra status, Blood Rush for the crit whenever we hit it, Berserker's Fury to keep us with that attack speed, and we're still doing Viral Electricity. Same stance, same Disciples Merit, and this time I do recommend it. T uh, we're using Melee Influence and Conditional Overload. So, obviously, how does it how does it work? Well, let's spawn this Oricon Battle Group. Let's go to Steel Path. Now, like most builds, you obviously don't go instantly for the heavy guys. Let's go ahead and go for the small ones. As you see, it does quite well. And here I am trying to get Ronan's Rush, and Ronan's Rush has been applied. We get our Incarnate, and then we just start smacking. And as you see, it spreads its Viral and its Electricity quite well, and keeps spreading the uh, Gas Clouds. Oh, gas clouds are toxin clouds and it just keeps spreading and it doesn't stop this build works quite well but what if you mixed warframe abilities into it so who in question is the frame i'm adding to this build well you've seen him before and i think he still fits quite well obviously you could use core you could use volt you could use uh literally anybody to be honest and naros if you want it but i'm going to be using frost the reason I'm using my Frost is due to the build I have him with. He is running, well, obviously not perfect mods, but he's running Icy Avalanche. This gives me Overguard, and with the strength I am at, I'm guaranteed Armor Strip. So, how do I usually build him? Well, pretty simple. Turn off Steel... Uh, I didn't mean to turn off Steel Path. My apologies. Turn on Steel Path. Turn off Pause AI. Obviously, I have energy at the start. I go up here. I ensnare them. And once they're ensnared, I press 4. Once I press 4, I just do a couple whacks. And well, they die before I even need the Incarnon. But say I had the Incarnon. Go ahead and get them piled up together again. And let's just try to proc my Incarnon. Turn that on. What happens if I turn off their armor? Well, they died to the Toxic Cloud that appeared. So let's try this one more time. Spawn a ton of enemies. Look over. Hit them with an ensnare. Turn off their armor because of max range and just hit them once. I think you see why I really like this build. It's an easy armor strip. It traps them together and I, I don't have to worry about any of their issues. So I'm going to go ahead and get my build set up, fixed and ready to be used. And I'll see you guys in Still Path. And here we are in Still Path. I went ahead and went with a random high level uh, exterminate mission set so, so I can show off how the weapons work in a 
non-controlled setting. So obviously we don't have our Incarn on yet, but we can still beat the bricks off some enemies. As you can tell, it still doesn't matter what level they are. It still hits hard, but obviously I have my abilities. So let's make sure we use them. Got our Incarn on, so proc it. How's it going to fare against a horde of enemies? Well, melee influence and prime breach do work together, so a lot of enemies are just going to be getting procced from a good distance away. Obviously, that's the point of using my uh, ensnare now that I subsumed on over my ice wave to pull enemies closer to each other so it's a bit more of a condensed cloud instead of having to fight enemies from like across the room. Wrong way. Obviously, it hits real hard. It has no issues dealing with enemies in, well, mass densities. And if you ever take damage, just press your four, freeze them up. And hell, usually you want to enter the room and press four instead of doing what I'm doing, which is just running in and pressing it. Because if you do it outside of a room, if you're running the same build I will be, you're going to have a ton of reach or range, whatever you want to call it. With that extra range, you obviously can just roam across the room, hit almost every enemy in a room, run over and hit them once and strip their armor and cause toxin clouds. There's a heavy unit, just for example, and obviously he still doesn't stand a chance. Now, obviously, if I stop doing my comp normal stance and just get my Ronin's Rush, I'll get even more attack speed on top of Berserker's Fury, basically making it even easier to kill everything. As you see, still nothing having any issues. So what else could I show you? Obviously, I can show you an Acolyte, so I'll get back to you whenever an Acolyte spawns. All right, now that I completely swapped over to doing a survival instead, uh, I finally got an Acolyte. So let's see how this performs against an Acolyte. This has been performing quite well against everything else here. So let's go ahead and rip off his armor and... Well, that was kind of expected. After all, Acolytes aren't that, well, tanky early on, but still. As you see, I didn't struggle that much. Hell, I bet I didn't even have to remove his armor, to be honest with you. But as you tell, I haven't really had any issues. Almost all my kills have been melee kills. The only ones that haven't been are well, all the headshot kills I've been getting. And I'm not sure if the gas clouds count as melee kills, but not gas clouds, toxin clouds. But something I wanted to mention because I have forgotten to in uh, a little bit earlier. When it comes to melee influence, uh, when it spreads, it does increase your combo counters. So you really don't have to build anything for combo duration. Technically, you don't have to be running... Uh, Aeropon, I think is what I'm on. I don't remember. Whichever one the melee one is, you may not have to technically run it if you just swap out a mod or have it a hold on, a Riven that has something to do with combo duration or uh, initial combo, which obviously will work. But as you see, this build works phenomenal with crowds of enemies, hell, even single target enemies. But I'm going to go ahead and head to my orbiter and give you all my final thoughts on the weapon. So overall, how do I feel about this weapon? Well, to me, the dual liquors are a phenomenal weapon. I think they work phenomenal with and without the Incarnon, and they are basically a counter to the Corpus enemies. Their stats are not bad. Obviously, decrease that just by a little bit, and you'd have the accurate number. But obviously, it's not a crit weapon. It's obviously a status weapon. And that's fine. That's perfectly all right. It's a very strong status weapon. It spreads it well. It does its damage correctly. And it hits very, very hard. Would I recommend it to everybody? Obviously, yes. This is actually one of the ones I recommend everybody to at least try. If you don't like it, fine. It's very, very strong. though. But obviously, it has its downsides. It's pure status, meaning you're going to have a little issue critting, stuff like that. It has high crit multiplier, though. So obviously, if you want to, you can build it for crit. But obviously, it's more, more, more for status, in my opinion. Despite its stats here saying it's more for crit. But to me, it's built better for status. But other than that, uh, if you guys want to see any other type of weapons, do tell me. Obviously, I have other Incardons in here that I can do ahead of time. Like, I can do my hate. I could do if I swap over to my primaries. I could do Strun. I could do um that's what I haven't done. Dread, which I also have to do. Uh, I don't plan on doing Torrid. And I still have to do Latron. So in the comments, tell me which ones you guys want to see first, and I will obviously do them. Another thing, as soon as Protea Prime comes out, expect a video on her Velox and her because while running Rivens recently, I was able to get a Velox Riven that I will roll once she comes out and acquirable. Obviously, it may be a little bit because your boy's a little broke on Forma. 
potatoes and adapters. So I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm in a little bit of a struggle. So if I scroll down, I got three Umbra, one stance. I got 10 built. I got one blue potato left. I got four weapon ones though. Uh, I don't think I have a single adapter. I have two wep I have two warframes and one uh Exilus weapon adapter, but I have a ton of melee arcane adapters. So there may even be an Okina Prime uh review on that coming up, whenever she eventually does come out. Uh but other than that, I guess I forgot the rest of your day. I hope uh this video helps you in learning how to build certain weapons. And obviously, like I said. If you want to see a certain weapon, do tell me what that certain weapon is. Other than that, make sure you guys subscribe and hit that like button and hit that bell for post notifications so you know whenever I post a new video. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.